Welcome back, everybody. This is Robert, the old school grower. As my followers know, I no longer have a grow. A month ago, we had a tragic uh, fire. Uh, I want to thank everyone for all your kind, heartfelt comments. I want to thank those who donated to the GoFundMe. Uh, I will personally thank each and one of you uh, for doing that. I, it's, it's very much appreciated. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. The GoFundMe uh, hasn't produced at this point enough I need just to get the basics going. So I'm here, uh, thanks to Grow Rebates, I'm in their office, and we're gonna move on. Today, Fertilizer 101. Actually, this is basic, it might be Fertilizer 99. Let's go through this and see what happens. So, you drive up to the hydroponic store, you walk into the hydroponic store, and you go, Hey man, I need some fertilizer. Can you help me out, bro. And uh, the guy sells you some stuff. You go back into the car. You sit down. You look at whatever you bought, and on the container, the bag, the package, whatever you got, it says NPK, and it has some numbers underneath it. What do those numbers stand for? And what do those numbers do for the plant? <clears throat> I typically buy 25 pounds of water soluble fertilizer. N stands for nitrogen, P, phosphorus, K, potassium. Three of the, one, two, three of the six macronutrients that all plants need. And we'll get into the micronutrients in a minute. So you buy the 25 pounds that uh, these numbers I just threw up there at random. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason for that. So if the N is 8, that's 8% 8 of 25 is nitrogen, 2 pounds of nitrogen. Phosphorus, 10%. Comes to 2.5 pounds. Potassium, 3 pounds at 12%. You got a total of 7.5 pounds of fertilizer in a 25-pound bag. Well, what's the rest of the stuff? Well, typically you can't find it on the bag of fertilizer what they're using for filler. You have to physically call the manufacturer and go, hey man, what are you using for filler on your uh, CalMag special or whatever you got? And, and they'll tell you, good filler, sterile sand, sterile dirt, something of that nature, something that's free of salt, and doesn't have fertilizers in it. Bad filler, sawdust, bark, any of the wood products. And the reason for that is, if that's a filler in here, the very first thing your nitrogen's going to do, it's not gonna to go to your plant, it's gonna to go to break down the cellulose in any of the wood products that you have in there for filler. All right, nitrogen. It's, it's the key. It makes the plants grow. It's the key for photosynthesis. It's a major component of chlorophyll. You know, we all know that chlorophyll is green. The green comes from the photosynthesis, from the photons from the light energy, produce the sugars as it sucks up the water from the plant and it sucks in the CO2 from the, from the atmosphere. Phosphorus, it also helps capture the light energy, the actual photons. Phosphorus gives you bigger flowers. I don't care what kind of flowering plant it is, you'll get bigger flowers. And it also helps maintain the cell wall and you're gonna have a healthier plant if you have adequate levels of phosphorus. Potassium works with the phosphorus to improve root structure. It acts almost like an amendment that the way it buddies up and companions with the phosphorus to help the root structure. And also, the mass density, we're talking total weight here, and 
the number of bud points, the number of flowers, bud points. You're going to have more flowers on a plant with your potassium, and it will assist the phosphorus in the root structure. Now, we got three more here. Sulfur's the outlier. We'll go with calcium and magnesium first. Calcium is really crucial. Calcium helps the plant uptake all your other nutrients that you have in your fertilizer. All of them, the micronutrients and the macronutrients. You got to have them. Calcium also promotes a healthier plant, stronger cell walls. It's also a must. Magnesium, it's another macronutrient that you got to have. It has an immediate impact on the plants to be able to more efficiently collect the photons, collect the light. And when the plant's able to easily absorb as much light as possible, it creates sugars, it creates carbohydrates, it makes your plant grow better, and you're going to have a much better success with it. Now, the sulfur <clears throat> helps the nitrogen metabolize to produce the chlorophyll is what we need, at least in the veg stage. I mean, all through, we need some chlorophyll, but more so in the veg stage, typically. And you don't need a lot of it uh, as you do the other macronutrients. About 0.2% is enough, and you really only have to apply it once. Now, the issue with sulfur is, uh, my feeling is, is people have gone more to rock wool and clay pellets. Uh, they're not getting enough sulfur. They, they need a little addition of sulfur. Uh, sulfur is the, I think it's the fifth uh, most common element on Earth today. So if you're using soil, you don't have to have a sulfur supplement. Um, but if you're growing in pots and you're growing in stuff that's not like for real soil, you got to add the sulfur. Sulfur takes months before the plant can metabolize it. It takes literally months. So what do I do to give my girls an adequate amount of sulfur? I buy what's called micronized sulfur. Micronized means it's real tiny. They take the sulfur molecule and however they do it, I don't know if they break it up and make it smaller, but they make it so tiny that it's real easy to foliar spray and have the plant absorb it. Now, when do you foliar spray? I, I made this mistake for many years. I always thought when the plant was dryish, not, not wilting, uh, dry, but dry. That now is the time to foliar spray. The plant's really thirsty, and it's going to suck the foliar spray in. Wrong, wrong. It's the absolute opposite. After you water the plant, the metabolism starts right there. Starts sucking in the carbon and the hydrogen and the CO two out of the atmosphere. Uh, it, it opens up the uh, the holes in your leaves so they can suck better. So you really want to apply your sulfur uh, after your water, half hour would be great. And also with the sulfur, when you spray it, if you use a petroleum-based spray for anything else, let's say for mites, uh, most or many of the foliar sprays for spider mites are in a petroleum-based product, uh, you can get plant toxicity and you can really hurt your plant. So my advice is on the sulfur, micronized sulfur, foliar spray after you've watered it, do this with the lights are off and don't add any petroleum-based anything on your plants for a week. Now lastly here on the fertilizers, we have the micronutrients, copper, zinc, boron, manganese, iron, molybdenum. And how I just explained sulfur 
It has to be in the soil a long time before the plants can use it. Science has solved that for these particular metals and they turn them into what's called chelated copper, chelated zinc, chelated iron, chelated manganese. And chelated means, I don't totally understand the science, but they add a man-made chelator, shall we say, which, may, which allows the plant to take up the micronutrients immediately. So this is, this is real important also. Let me, a simple analogy. Take a nail, grind it all up. It's nice fine powder. It's iron. It's all it is. Psh, throw it in the garden. Well, maybe next year the plants will be able to take the iron out. So that's why we want to go to chelated iron. All right. So in the comment section on our the grow rebates uh, videos that I've done, a lot of comments have been made. What do you use? Well, I'm going to show you what I use. And I'm not recommending that you use this. What I am recommending is you use something similar. Okay? When you buy 25 pound bags of fertilizer, if the packaging is so doggone pretty, you want to open it up, grab a handful like M&Ms or something, and eat it, don't buy it. Why? You're paying for that packaging, okay? Second thing is, if it's got an emblem on it that would make a cool tattoo, don't buy it. I'm telling you, it's all marketing. We got to go by the numbers. Here's what all the stuff does. We got to go by the numbers. I use one fertilizer for veg all the way through. I didn't used to do that. But for about the last nine or 10 years, that's what I've been doing. And I use one fertilizer for, the, for flowering my plants. One. I don't add anything else. I... I've done it all. I've done all the amendments that you can think of. I've, I've done the, uh, the, the three-part system. I've done the base fertilizer, and there's something you put here, and there's something you put there at the end. And it's, it, it's like a monkey trying to screw a football. I mean, it just takes, it just, it takes, it's time-consuming. And I have not noticed any better product with all my fumbling around with fertilizers over the year. So I made my life easier. Let's look at what I use for my, uh, for veg. All right. Here's what we got here, team. If you can see this, Plant Mar Mar uh, Marvel Nutriculture Cal Mag Special. 15515, okay? You see that? Now, what I do is when I buy my fertilizers, uh, I shop. I look for those numbers, 15515, and uh, this costs around $35 to $42 a bag. I know, I know people that are spending $150, $180 for 25 pounds of water soluble fertilizer, and they can't prove to me for one second that they're growing more poundage of flowers. I, I don't buy it, I've done that for too long. So let's talk about this briefly. 15, five, 15, five, 15. 15 nitrogen, five phosphorus, 15 potassium, and this includes all the micro, uh, uh, micronutrients you need. And also, it is 5% calcium, calcium and 3% magnesium. These are two real musts, as I, as I said over here, under the macronutrients. So that's what I use for veg. And I have absolutely beautiful plants. You've seen my plants in all stages. And I just don't mess with anything else. That's, that's it. That's all I use. Uh, 
for the flower fertilizer. Let me get black stuff all over me. Let me grab the bag. I'll be right here. This is a Peter's product, 30, 10, 30, 20. All right, let's put this up here. 30. Ten, thirty, twenty, ten nitrogen, thirty phosphorus, twenty potassium, and I have found that this works really, really well. You know, depending on the strain, and if I don't goof anything else up, I have just had excellent success with those numbers. And if I can't get the Peters, I buy the numbers that are close to it as possible. Now, I am the last seven, eight years now, I've been growing with high intensity LEDs. I grew a lot of beautiful crops with high pressure sodium, and I could do it again today. But the high pressure sodium lights have a way lower efficiency factor, which means they take a lot less fertilizer because under the high efficiency lights with all the other conditions being the same they need more nutrients because they're growing harder bigger stronger and they are making more total weight and flower on your plant and there's a number of studies to prove that i'm not here to argue but i i'm, I'm not against high pressure sodium i think it's silly because of the waste of money uh, and you can actually grow more product. But uh, if I didn't have LEDs, I could grow some great crops with high pressure sodium. So having said that, when I used high pressure sodium, this is the only, these are the numbers that I used. Now, because the metabolism is so much greater with LEDs, I need more nitrogen. I need a little bit extra calcium and magnesium. And, and uh, where do I get that from? I get it from my, from my bench fertilizer, 515, 15, 515. So what I do is, uh, make it simple here. Let's say I wanna make a five gallon bucket full of flour fertilizer. 80% of it will be 10, 30, 20. 20% of it will be 15, 5, 15. And back in the old days, I would use zero or five for nitrogen, zero or five for nitrogen. For high pressure sodiums, it doesn't work so good when you're using high efficiency LEDs. Uh, they're just that more efficient. So, I, I know this is pretty basic stuff here, I hope you learned something. I'm really glad to be back. This is Robert, the old school grower, and thanks a lot for everything. I appreciate it.